Hello everybody once again! This is Akua Kazoo. Welcome back to your casual Monday video. What's up guys? How's our Monday so far? Today we'll be doing a few things. We'll be talking about Tower of Abyss TOA. We'll be crafting some random 300 crafts. And we'll be doing Castle Rush to talk about stuff. Alright. So let's talk about uh, Tower of Abyss first. Most of you guys would have trouble trying to do the third floor. All right, which is the uh, the rice cake, the bean rice cake. Okay, so I want to divert your attention to Seven Nights Reddit. There's a very nice guy. What a nice guy! That's a very nice guy who is sharing his Tower of Abyss uh, experience. Let me just bring it on screen for you guys. So thank you to Mr. Seidel. Seidel, all right. So you mentioned that for the third floor, multi-hitters, the strategy is to bring multi-hitters. As the cake has void shield or pseudo void shield, AK rinse one by Crash Man. Oh, it was Crash Man that, that actually shared, alright. About 50 to 60 void shield hits. So the lineup that I brought uh, for the, the bean cake one uh, was... I brought Dalance, Wukong... Rin, no, I didn't bring Rin. Downs, Wukong. I bought Shane and I bought my Ruby. All a lot of multi hits in that sense per hit. So I managed to clear it one try. So today we'll be doing this guy. Alright, and I think this one's the easy one. So what is interesting to know about that, okay, about the Tower of Savior is let me just share with you guys some key information that you must know, alright. In the more info section, the things that you need to know is this, alright. Every floor consists of the three waves, so sometimes for now it's only up to one wave, so that's not really important. The important part is that every 10, 20th floor for each season, there will be a special stage. You know, there will be gimmicks. So the Void Shoe was like the gimmick kind of thing. So that's why you need to take note of, okay. From the 15th floor onwards, enemies are immune to stat reducing, reducing debuffs, like Ace, that kind of stuff don't work. Okay, defensive debuffers, Li Zhong, Guan Yu, they don't work. And from 21st floor onwards, there will be special units. So this is actually the part that is important. For the first floor to 14th floor, enemies in TOA are not immune to CC. That means it can be CC. Alright, so basically what that means is that the first 14th floors are pretty easy. So you do not want to use your best units because they, you cannot use that same unit for 3 days. So today, let's see, who should we bring up? Ah, I'm just going to bring my Rin for fun. I think we should be good. Time to show us our true form. One reason why I can bring him, I mean her, as well is because that guy can cast Swift Rider, I think. So, immune to physical damage and Rin is magical. I don't, I don't think I'll be using my Rin anytime soon again, so. Fourth floor, easy peasy, but remember, you know, when it comes to special flaws like the bean cake one, so what you want to do is, before you do a Tower of Abyss, go to the Reddit thread. I'll put the link in the description below for that Reddit thread. They actually share their experience on how, how they actually, uh, how that person, Sido, actually did his, his flaw. So go there, you can see things that work, things that didn't work, and yeah, at least you will not waste your run, right? So what is good about Tower of Abyss, you may ask, is the rewards, alright? So, where, yes, the shop. You can use the Tower of Abyss shop. Look at this! Oh my god! And the 2000 uh, stars one apparently is for some uh, Tower of Abyss uh, specialty uh, equipment, if I'm not wrong. Anyway, I'm not very sure about that, but I think the 6 star accessory is pretty good, but you might just get 20% crit rate or 20% total damage like me. My luck so far has been shite. The 4 star hero selector, I'm not uh, not too sure if this selector actually works for um, what's that, for the puzzle. Yeah, I do not know if the 4 star hero selector works for the puzzle. Maybe Kazoo can save them kids when I hit 180 I'll buy one. If I still need a puzzle hero, because right now my Wukong puzzle essentially I only need... I mean this guy is easy to get so there's no worries. I only need uh, Alina pretty much. Uh, Wendy is not hard to get either so... Yeah, I'm almost there for my 38 Wukong. But let's move on to uh, crafting stuff. Alright, 
Let's see, we can craft three armors and five weapons. Ooh, not bad. Actually, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. Hang on. I ran out of slots. You know, when you do photo farming and you get all this trash, you know. Oops. I took away one. Alright, that should be good. I failed floor tree. Yeah, so anyway, floor tree strategy is bring things that don't die fast, or things with void shoes, and bring things with a lot of multi hits. Oh, 1, 2, 5, 1, 0, 5, 0! 125 is 7 knights armor defense guys. 1050 is the best you can get. Whoa, not bad. See guys, that's what I mean. Don't do confirm crafts, man. I mean confirm craft Oh wow. Okay. Cause I think you need to shut up now. Okay. Maybe on the weapon side. I'm actually crafting it because I need uh, fodder equipment for power-ups, for awakened stuff. So those 180, 27 lethal that you just see, we can throw them away. And the other reason why I'm crafting magic is because I need a good weapon for my Spada and my Karen and my Bytel. Lucky on the armor side, shite on the weapon side. It's normal guys. Net marble things, alright? Net marble things. Um, 2 to 0. Look at, like... Oh, I got my Esparta to 40, I got my Karen to 40. Yeah, look at this. I can power up with them fodders. Like this one. Oh shit. Okay, thank goodness. I almost wasted some fodders. Okay, so this is done. 27% block rate. Do I have a 32% block rate? 29% block rate, but this is 125 though. The block rate percent seems to be better than the defense IMO. Okay, hmm. Anyways, let's do one uh, dragons. Let's talk about stuff. So I have a few questions for a bunch of people from uh, like stream or videos like how is the spike revamp? Honestly speaking I have not seen many people using spike yet. Like the people that I've seen using spike are people where that has like level 38, 30, 40 spike. Like I've seen 34 spike being used or 32 spike, 32 spike being used but they get destroyed so mixed feelings about that. And one thing to note is that because of the spike changes uh. For Spike Castle Rush down, you expect to get a higher score because your units don't actually stay frozen when I believe Spike normal attacks the guy that's frozen or something. Or the freeze actually breaks when you cast the other freeze. Not too sure if he has the full mechanics of the multi hit because I didn't see the multi hit uh, effect effect from the Castle Rush Spike. But I do know that for Spike Castle Rush right now, maybe it's a bug, I don't know. You would expect uh, to get a higher score. but. If I was to do Spike, I will do maybe Spike Rudy. Okay, the thing about Spike is that most teams, most teams, most teams, uh, most teams that use a Spike, like kind of uses it for the the revamps, but. I think the spike changes actually makes him viable for pairing him up with Rin. And the most important thing about the spike revamp is that they didn't give him any buff removal. Not saying that they should give him, okay, I'm just saying that he has no innate buff removal. And right now, uh, at least for my ratings, like from 3.6k to 4300 ratings, like if you want to break the master tier, you have to have somebody that deals with the Shipara. Or the Jiparang or the Yiparang, whatever you want to call him, okay, but we call him Shiparang now, okay, it's full of shit. Okay, that thing is broken. And if you do not have anything to deal with that, this is why you actually see top teams using level 40 Da Qiao. Or level 40 Sokyo. 
because you know tails, uh, shipangs, the undead, the zombies, the Chris. Maybe Chris Rudy line. I'm not too sure how popular is that above 4400 or 4600 ratings in master tier. But if you want to break 4300 ratings, if you have all the jewels and the units, you need someone that can deal with shipang. That thing is. That thing is. Like literally you will see people complaining about how one Shipara one versus five the entire team. Because he gets a five man stun and just kills everybody. I mean one way to deal with it is if you bring your own uh Shipara. But that'll be a stalemate, right? You can't really assure that you have a high percent win rate. Because you need like 60%, 70% win rate to to climb. If you have 50% win rate, then you're just going up and down, you're not going anywhere. So Spike doesn't provide that. So it is good if you have a level 40 Rudy plus Plus a level 38 40 spike and then you use a Wukong Rin. Last one maybe you can bring Ace. You know. And you will you I would say you have a legit lineup there. Pretty legit lineup. But you are relying on you no know, Rudy to deal with the the zombies. Might not be that reliable to be honest, especially with Tail, because Tail counters Ru Rudy in the sense that he has guaranteed crit as well. And from my experience right now, when I fight against Rudy teams, you will see Rudy using Rush on uh, on Jave. And because Jave is very popular right now, level 40 Jave is very popular because of his self-immunity, right? And, you know, the Rudy will actually rush, like the opponent's Rudy will rush my Jave, and he, will, he won't rush my tail. And in the first place, it's not easy to get tail to die, to get him into the zombie form very, very quickly, especially if they poke him in the back, back line position. So, this is why the spike revamp actually hasn't caused you know, shock waves around the Seven Nights arena community yet. Because only very specific composition, I would say, will really benefit from this change. It just makes him a viable hero to be in the composition now. That's about it. Like they didn't make him super strong, which is, I believe, the the way to do it. Shouldn't make him so OP that he must be in every team. That's the wrong way of, of introducing this revamp. Just puts him in a spot where he's viable for a certain composition. So that's my thoughts about. The spike, all right, and many people wrote off uh, Sokyo, but actually Sokyo is being used by top arena teams. But obviously, you know, top arena teams plus five jewels, you know, awakened armors everywhere plus five as well. So maybe that's why she's tanky enough to survive. I've seen people using counter raid armors. In fact, I believe the top player in Asia uses double counter armors. But the second player that uses Star Tiao uses double HP awakened armors. So what is the right setup for Sokyo slash Da Tiao? I don't know. I think it depends on your lineup. It depends on your lineup. But the, the points difference between the top player and the second player is quite huge. So probably counter is the way to go. Because aside from that, they have very very similar lineups. Like maybe a 40 tail, 36 to 38 win, that kind of stuff. Really spike Jave together is nightmare. Yeah, it's true. I read the Reddit uh, thread as well. There's a, there was a Reddit thread about how Arena is very special hero centric right now, which is technically speaking not very uh, new player friendly in that sense. Because newer players, their Seven Nights will be low level. But right now, Arena is very, uh, you know, highly transcended Seven Nights or special units uh, heavy. Which is why I can't really complain about. Uh, Shiparong because Shiparong is one of the the few heroes out there that new players can use Finas, can transcend him if they're lucky enough to fuse him, that kind of stuff. To actually be able to compete at a respectable level in a, arena. What I'm talking about, like when I got to 3k ratings, 4k ratings in arena for the first time, I was four months, five months into the game. And I don't think newer players I'm not saying that they shouldn't get in within the first two months, but I think they shouldn't expect themselves to hit 4,000, 3,000 within the first month of playing, to be honest. It's not going to be fair for people that play 5 months, right, in that sense. But I believe that they should have a chance. So, 2 months in, 3 months in, 1 and a half months in, maybe then they should start focusing on Arena. Like, I always tell everyone, always build your raid team first, if you want to progress, like, consistently in this game. Because your raid team is the what, I mean, it's what is going to, you know, allow you to farm dragons, and dragons gives you the ability to craft, and you saw just now I craft stuff, and I got gear. And you can gear your guys, and that's how you actually gear your your arena heroes and your raid team heroes without spending money, without uh yeah, like that's the only way you can get it. Where are you gonna get you know seven night 
weapons aside from events, events, rewards, that kind of stuff. So you won't get them unless you get it for event rewards. So as a new player, if you want to consistently get uh, gear, then you should always focus on your raid team. Alright, let's do Cast Rush. Okay, today is Dalon, it's not that. Okay, no, wrong hero. <laughs> that was close. I need to bring Karin today. Alright, okay, let me know in the comments if you guys want a Castle Rush guide. I think I'm getting close to being ready to come out with a Castle Rush generic guide in the sense of the, the working compositions that you can bring for every day. Like, I wouldn't say I'm like super good. Like, some people release a video, they do 10 million uh, Castle Rush points. For Retro Day or something, they have like Heaven Nail or something. I haven't actually watched the video, but there are some gimmick lineups in play. I do not know of those yet, but I think in general, I think I'm good. Getting consistent 2 million for uh, Castle Rush is a pretty good sign, even though I put in Yui instead of Karen just now. Who should I bring as a friend? I will bring my Eileen. I'm going for the YOLO DPS strat. Okay, so one thing about normal Castle Rush, I'm going to emphasize again, is that there is a damage reduction cap of 40%. This is why Rachel is not that strong. This is why you can bring Lee Jung. This is why you can bring Mei instead of Rachel. Okay, let's not bring the wrong Eileen. I need to bring... Oh shit, I don't think I have a Dancer Cage's Eileen today. Shit, I can't. 40 Karin, really? Double Karin, just that. Really? Double current is a strat for... There's a 40 current here. Okay, I'm gonna try the double current strat. Wait, so what? Wait. So I bring... I No. Wait, then who do I bring first? So so we just do double current? Hello chat. Let's, let's experiment today. Uh, hello, AK, AJK8000. What's up? It's double current the strat. Try one die, but I will lose Eileen's damage buff though. Should I bring Shane then? I'm gonna bring Shane instead. No, my first Eileen is my first Karin is gonna die real fast. Yo, Karin, it survived five turns. No, my Karin won't survive five turns. I mean, she can if I heal. Uh, let's try, guys. Let's go. Whatever. Oh, yeah, my Dallas is 38 as well. Whatever, let's go. Let's try. Because usually when I use Karin, I don't actually heal the Karin, just let the Karin die. Maybe I should have given 2 HP armors to Karin before I started. Is it too late, guys? Yeah, I think it's too late. RIP. RIP! The ripening. I think Dina has to go and mob, so see you later if you're playing ball because alright. See you later, Sunny. Oh shit, wow, he didn't die. Uh oh. Okay, he's dead. So, uh, Cupid was telling me about what we call the, what we call the, um, I wanted to say, <laughs> turn 5 guys, rip, we lost, uh, turn the lane strat guys. Basically, when you do Castle Rush or when you do Dragons, right, you always want to use like a DPS guy's skill ASAP whenever it's off cooldown, right? But his strategy is that if someone speed attacks, you use their skill when you see someone speed attack instead. Because everybody on your team needs to do a normal attack first before the turn is over. So just now, A speed attack, so I'm going to do Duna Slash first. We're going to see how long we can delay that one turn. Okay, wait. So my Shane actually speed attack. I actually waste like that. I could have used maybe two slow sales worth. So many uh, cooldown reduction from Legion. Okay, 
I'm gonna try heal my carry. So it's turn two now. Turn two one seven one guys, we lost. <laughs> we lost! <laughs> this is gonna be a bad pass rush, hundred percent. Okay, we finally get a crit from Shane, but no lethal. What? Why no lethal? He's bad man. Okay, when this happens, it means that my Legion will actually will actually counter. Let me try to heal Karin again. I need to make sure that she doesn't die. Or this strap to work. Ripening! Not bad, okay, we're gonna have another few turns of, uh, you know. We're gonna die at turn 7, I guess. <laughs> I'm not gonna get 2 million, guys. This is a disaster. <laughs> yeah! No lethal! Okay, yeah, lethal this time. Wait, it was lethal just now, so I really need my Eileen damage boost. 60% damage pump, guys. Nice, nice. You don't summon your friend currently on current passive and we lost! Forgot about that too. It's okay, man. It's okay! Once again guys, welcome to learn from Kazoo's Mystic. Alright, casual Monday. <laughs> I never ran the double current strap before. So it's not something I'm comfortable with and yeah. But as the chat mentioned, you should only summon the second current after the first current buffs ends. Because you could choose when the hero actually comes in. Like your friend hero. So that's what I should have done, which I didn't. I think if I get 1 million, I'll be very happy, really. <laughs> That's the video title, guys. Learn from Kazu's mistakes. Is, wait, isn't it Ica Farm Monday? <laughs> 1.6 million? I don't think so, man. Look at how slow the score is climbing. I think 1.2 million. I think 1.2 mil. I think it's gonna be 1.2. Feels bad, man, for my guild. Hello, potatoes, what's up? I really like the way they changed the Daily Strike to have 3 numbers. It's a lot prettier now. I think we need to heal guys. Technically speaking, my Karen can revive someone, so it's not all it's not all bleak, guys. Technically speaking. Man, it makes me wonder how Romano gets like three to four million Castle Rush points. I mean, he has the top notch gear, that's one thing, but still, like twice or three times more my normal Castle Rush points. Yeah? Just makes you feel sad by yourself. You know? It's turn 6! It's gonna start hitting hard, the Chris. 
damage. Oh, one turn left for Legion. No lethal this time. No. Did Kazu change mastery? Yes, I did change to the Kazu Rush mastery. Soul Slayer mode! Okay, we got past the 1 million mark already. So at this point, it doesn't matter because there's no way I'm gonna hit 2 million. For those who do not know, uh, 1 million gives you 5 Castle Rush points. Then you can use Castle Rush points to buy stuff. You know, element selectors, element tickets, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah! Welcome back, Dalans! You're alive! There's a couple of his void shoes, that's it. Oh, the cooldown thing is actually pretty good. I mean, considering the fact that you can rest another guy right ASAP. Think about it, guys. The stratagems. The strategy. Okay. Good. Unless we can rest our dear Shane. Is it even worth the time eleven and nine dragon? <laughs> Oh, 20 seconds. Can she revive someone before she dies? I mean, she can rest one more time. She hasn't died one time yet. Mm. Yeah. Oh, she heals herself. Rip. <laughs> Goodbye, Legion. It was nice knowing you. Everyone dies. Oh, Legion dies. Yep. That means the damage now is going to be very high. Try rest, Legion. Sure, sure. Let's consider this, guys. I rest, Legion. He's back. He reduces the cooldown. And since my Karin can rest one more time, she might just be alive to rest another person. Might. Huge might, guys, but let's just try. Yup, revive Dijon for cooldown reduction. Yeah! Oh, oh, phew. Be gone! So, quick, counter him! Yes! What? <laughs> Lolly! Lolly! Oh, I knew you were close. 1.5 million. I have let my ancestors down. Yay. Dahlia. Oh! Alright, guys. Final stuff before we call this video a day. One slot. Can we get that six star jewel guys? Can we get that six star jewel? Can we get that six star jewel? Let's find out. You move three slots! Woo! Two slots! Can we get the four star element? Oh! Feels good man. Feels good man. Oh, block rate as well! Thank you. Thank you, Netmarble. <sighs> For those who do not know, if you're gonna say, Oh my god, hacks! Kazu hacking again! Alright. Something sad happened yesterday. I had a B.9... B.9 rank chest, 1250 summon away from A rank, and I was about to summon, but I collected my chest by mistake. My mistake, obviously! My fault! 100% my fault! 200% my fault! But that happened, alright? My name has been Nakua Kazu. Thanks for watching once again. God bless, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next video, alright? Take care, guys. Goodbye.